Hi everyone, welcome back to Dobby Books. So today I'm going to cover what I've read, what I'm going to read, and a bit of a book haul I did on my little trip to Santa Barbara. So let's get started. First, what I've read. I did finally finish Mansfield Park. It was the first time I read the book. It is a little bit different than um, Austin's other books. It's a little more on the serious side, whereas Pride and Prejudice had a, a level of playfulness to it, comedy to it. Mansfield Park, not so much. It really just seemed like it was more direct. I, I normally went with, with Jane Austen, I notice she makes her point and she does character development in order to do that and she does it very well. But it's always has a good sprinkling of humor. And Mansfield Park explained um, the issues with each of the characters, but it was really focused, I think, on... on um, there was always the good and the proper thing to do, but it was it just seemed a little for the lack for lack of a better word, a little darker. It was that was a new experience for me. Some I do want to read this again. I'm gonna wait a few months and then read it again because that always gives you more perspective. There's things here I know I didn't catch, but this is this is a good read. It's it, it, it takes a little while, but this is definitely one of Austin's later novels and you can see how her writing has developed over time if you read her or if you've read her earlier novels and of course I also read the children's version of, of Mansfield Park by awesomely Austin series this was pretty good this was pretty good of course when we're dealing with a younger audience rather than having them they can't always figure out what's going on like we would with an adult mind, our ability to reflect in our life experience. This, of course, explains things, explains the, the thought process of certain characters and really um, tells the reader what this person is doing wrong, whether their intentions were innocent or more dishonest. This was a good series. I like the series so far. This one was retold by oh, Aisha Malik, and it was illustrated, and I know I'm not going to get this right, illustrated by Eglantine Delumont. So French, and I'm my, my apologies to the illustrator for that. Okay, so I read these two for Jane Austen July. And I did manage to do one other thing. I had to read some sort of... Um, um, critical, I think it was a critical review or writing on Jane Austen on that particular book. So I have the Cambridge introduction to Jane Austen, and this has critical essays on each one of her novels. So I read the one on Mansfield Park. I don't want to even go into the background on that. And I have to apologize, everybody. I haven't been feeling well for several days now. And I could feel it because it's like my brain's too tired to think. So, such is life. But anyway, that's my, my Jane Austen uh, July reads that I finished. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm going to read. And they're all tied to the readings that I'm going to be doing for the fall semester. So, my first one here. And this is not in the order that I'll be reading them. It's a combination of fiction and current events and classics and, gosh, I don't know what this one is. I think that's poetry. Anyways, the first one is Empire's Workshop, Latin America, the United States, and the Making of an Imperial Republic by Greg Grandin. I'm just trying to think what the heck class this is for. This says, oh gosh, examining over a century of U.S. intervention in Latin America, the acclaimed historian Greg Grandin reveals how the region has long served as a laboratory 
for U.S. foreign policy, providing generations of Washington policymakers with an opportunity to rehearse a broad range of diplomatic and military tactics, tactics that were then applied elsewhere in the world as the United States became a global superpower. And farther down, this completely revised edition of Empire's workshop includes new information on the U.S. invasion of Panama, U.S. interventions in Cuba, Guatemala, and Chile. Uh, let's see, plan Colombia and the war on drugs, the Obama administration's involvement in the 2009 coup in Honduras, and the current crisis at the U.S.-Mexican border caused by decades of misguided Washington policies. There's more on the back here, but I think that gives a good, a good summary of what it's about. Uh, there's some uh, reviews by Noam Chomsky, Chomsky, Stephen Wertheim, and Thea Rio Francos. So this is by Picador Press. That's going to be one of my reads. Oh, fun. This one, The Night Will Be Long by Santiago Gamboa. And this, what the heck is this? That's French flaps. A Colombian writer, a spellbinding novel about corruption deep in the foundations of the Latin American church. Uh, this is interesting too, so I'm going to guess. These two go together. I'm still trying to think of which class this is for. I'm not taking anything on Latin American history or U.S. history. Right? I'll eventually find out. Okay. The other one is The Old Man Who Read Love Stories. This one, I've, the, uh, my Canvas app has already, my, my instructor has already opened this course on my Canvas app. So I know for a fact that this is the first book we'll be reading, and these are um, translations we're going to be reading for the semester. Oh, I have to see. An aging widower lives quietly in a river town in the rain-soaked Ecuadorian jungle, where increasingly tourists and opportunists have begun to make inroads. He takes refuge in his books, paperback novels of faraway places, and bittersweet love. But one day, a trader pushes nature too far, setting a protective mother ocelot on a bloody rampage through the village. The old man, a hunter who once lived among the Indians and knows the jungle better than anyone, is pressured to join the expedition that will hunt down the animal. Drawn from his peaceful life, he is forced into the middle of a raging conflict between man and nature that is resolved temporarily by a powerfully climactic confrontation. Translated by Peter Bush. The original author is Luis Sepulveda. And this is Harvest Book Harcourt, Inc. And the other book just before this, I apologize. Who is the... Oh, Europa. Europa Editions. So this one. Empire's Workshop. The Man Who Read Love Stories. The next one I'll be reading in my translation class is Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. Signs Preceding the End of the World is one of the most arresting novels to be published in Spanish in the last 10 years. Yuri Herrera does not simply write about the border between Mexico and the United States and those who cross it. He explores the crossings and translations people make in their minds and language as they move from one country to another, especially when there's snow going back. So that's also going to be a great read. I'm glad that these are smaller books. Translated by Lisa Dillman, and this is which publisher? And other stories. Okay. <laughs> the third one we're reading is Gene Mapper. I've heard of this one before. By Tayo Fujiai, translated by Jim Hubbard. This is In a future where reality has been augmented and biology itself has been hacked, the world's food supply is genetically modified, superior, and vulnerable. 
When gene mapper Hayashida discovers that his custom rice plant has experienced a dysgenic collapse, he suspects sabotage. Hayashida travels across Asia to find himself in Ho Chi Minh City with hired gun hacker Yagodo at his side and in mortal danger as he pushes ever nearer to the heart of the mystery. I don't know what class this is for either. <laughs> but, oh wait a minute, let me see what the number is on the front. I know I wrote it. Okay, this is book number three for our, for our novels and translation class. And this is printed by Haiku Sodu. I've heard of that. I wonder if it's an imprint of... Based in San Francisco. The next one we'll be reading is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is for my English literature class. There's a lot of them. But this is one that was a, a lower level that I needed to take. And every time I tried to register for that lower it was a 200 level class. It was full. It was the wrong day. So I'm taking it now in my final semester. Uh, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I also have the Penguin edition, but this is the one that was going to be used in class. It was a good price, so I purchased it. This particular one is by Broadview. This is Broadview Editions. This needs no explanation. And the next one, I think this is the last one, uh, is Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Lafanu, edited by Carmen Maria Machado. This is for the same English um, English literature class. I'm talking English, British English class. Isolated in a remote mansion in a Central European forest, Laura longs for companionship until a carriage accident brings another young woman into her life, the secretive and sometimes erratic Carmilla. As Carmilla's actions become more puzzling and volatile, Laura develops bizarre symptoms, and as her health goes into decline, Laura and her father discover something monstrous. And this is published by Lanternfish Press. All right. So these will be the books I'll be reading over this fall semester, which goes from the end of August to mid-December. How many books is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. Two big, thick ones and the rest, ah, about average to small. So there we go. Those are the books. I. This is, yeah, the to read, TBR. And remember I told you that the one of the colleges that I was considering for grad school was St. John's College Graduate Institute, and I got there information here. They have a book list and I also have a printout and I have a lot of them under the literature, the history. What I don't have a lot of is philosophy and some some of the political philosophy as well but I'll, I'll work on that. What I wanted to work on was the the mathematics texts so I decided that would be my little project. And one of them was Lucretius on the Nature of Things. I have that one. Plato's Timaeus I have because I have the big volume of Plato's works. And I have another big volume of Aristotle's works. So I have his physics. I have Euclid's Elements. That's one of the books on the list. And I've had this for a while. Euclid's Elements. And I also have a Euclid's Elements that's been broken up into smaller books. Uh, with lessons and stuff. I can't find it. I didn't loan it to anybody. I didn't give it away. So I don't know where I put it, but I know I have that as well. So I have this. Another book was Ptolemy's Almagest or Almagest. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. That arrived today, right? Yes. That's this Introduction to the Mathematics of the Heavens. I have this edition by Green Lion Press. Euclid's Elements is by the same publisher, Green Lion Press. And another book on the list is... There's Galileo's Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems. I've had a harder time finding that. I'm, I'm still looking. I have Descartes' Discourse on Method. 
I have the Hackett edition. I know I covered this with you on a, on a previous video. And Bacon's uh, The New Organon. I'm still looking for that. I don't think I ordered it yet. Newton's Principia, which is on the way. I've ordered that. Darwin's The Origin of Species. I have that, and I covered that with you guys. And Lobachevsky's Theory of Parallels. Okay, that one's on the way. And then something by Freud, Selected Case Studies, which is very general. And then uh, Jung, the 1912 Lectures on the Theory of Psychoanalysis. But there were other math texts, and this is what's confusing me with this. I don't think it was from this, from this list, because I don't see it there, but I know it had to have been related to that. So now I have these other two math books. And the other two that are on the way, and I can't figure out what list I got them from. But let's cover what I've got. David Hilbert's Foundations of Geometry by Open Court Classics. And right now I got Apollonius of Perga Con Conics, books one through four. Got all these math books, which I'm going to add to my classics collection in their chronological order. Let me stack these up here. One, two, three, four. There's five of these books. And the question is, have I looked through them? Not really, because, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of scared. Math isn't my forte, but I do want to explore these and see if I can get a little bit of a head start should I decide to enroll at St. John's College. So we'll see. And it doesn't hurt to have them, right? Okay, now, third part by Book Hall. Remember, oh, let me, okay, so let's, let's, my husband and I went to Santa Barbara with the dogs and we were enjoying cooler weather from where we are. And after we did our walk and everything and had our lunch, we found a bookstore in town that was open. That was the thing. And this one is Chaucer's Bookstore. And I am telling you, this is a bookstore that reminded me of what bookstores were like before Amazon, before the big chain stores. This was an awesome bookstore. You could have just dropped me off and picked me up two weeks later. I, I would have been good. It was, it was fast, just row after row of high stacks. Um, overstock on the top of the stacks, some books on the on the floor, but it wasn't it wasn't cluttered because clutter drives me crazy. It was so pleasant, and they had a section that had oversized books, beautiful oversized books. They were in a glass case. Ah, oh, I wanted to get pictures of that section, but there were there was a uh, you know not an adult. Well, even if there was an adult there, I would try to take a picture where I wouldn't have them in there or make them feel uncomfortable. I'd wait until they walked away. But when there's a, a child there, a teenager, I just don't take the picture. So that person was there for a little while, and I said, oh, never mind. And remember those little books on, let's say, English literature or critical theory, and I forgot what they were called, those little ones? They had like two and a half rows of them on every topic, every, anything you could think of. Oh! I was just, oh, it was fantastic. The, uh, so I'm, at the end of this video, I think I'm going to show you the little bit of video and pictures that I did manage to get of the store. It's just a lovely store, Chaucer's Bookstore in Santa Barbara. It's on State Street. Oh, it was just so neato. Okay, so I decided I was going to look for, uh, for poetry, something, a book on poetry. I had watched... I think three or four videos from fellow booktubers on their favorite poets. And I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to grab a book on poetry on one of the books, on one of the poets that was mentioned. And do you know, I could not think of a single one. Um, <laughs> I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. Maybe it was the, the, the distraction of the stacks and stacks of books, but who knows? And I hadn't written it down. Normally I keep like a little list in my purse on a, in a little a notebook. No. 
So I finally settled on T.S. Eliot. <laughs> so that's a start. So I got a poetry book of T.S. Eliot, The Wasteland and Other Poems. This is a Penguin Classics edition. It'll go great with my other Penguin Classics. So I'm proud of myself for that. And then I thought, oh, wow, look, Alexis de Tocqueville, Democracy in America. It's another Penguin Classics. Let me get this. And when I got home and I was adding it to my collection on my phone, I realized I had one. And I remember when I uh, recorded my review of my library hall and this was it, and went in it, this was in that hall. I forgot about it. Oh well. This happens when you get older. You get all these duplicates and then you kick yourself for getting all these duplicates. But oh well. And I've been trying to find more books by Umberto Eco. And I already had this one that I found um, at the library, Foucault's Pendulum. Now I have the famous one, The Name of the Rose. And I know the general story behind this. Uh, Murders happening at a medieval uh, monastery. So now I've got another Umberto Eco and I can add that to my collection. And finally, I added another Folger Shakespeare book to my library, my Folger's Shakespeare library, King Lear. I have a lot of tragedies, but I don't have any history. So that's why I really wanted to focus on this. So now as far as histories go, I've got Julius Caesar and now I've got King Lear. And I'm going to work my way from there. And I like the larger Folger editions. I don't like the shorter ones. I like the larger ones. And I believe, well, it says updated. So I don't know what the details on that. Freshly edited text, newly revised explanatory notes, plot summaries, a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, I like these larger Folger Shakespeare editions. So those are the books that I got at Chaucer's Bookstore in Santa Barbara. These four here. And I, I didn't do too bad. I didn't go crazy. You know, I didn't spend like 100 or 200 or whatever. I stayed under 100 for these four. And I was happy, you know, proud of myself. And that, I think, is it, everyone. I think at the end of this, uh, besides in the description listing all the books for you, I'm also going to try to post a bit of the video that I took of Chaucer's bookstore. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your summer and be safe. Bye-bye.